All right, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to play Keystone North America. Now the objective of this game is to form ecosystems, plants and animals, trying to get them into a particular ecosystem. There's four different ecosystems in this game. And so like, for instance, a desert and a wetlands are two different ecosystems. So if you had two different animals next to each other that were in two different ecosystems and you were trying to score points for both of them, it wouldn't work because they're two different ecosystems. So let's show you what I mean. So first of all, I thought I'd set up a game, uh, sort of like I've already played the game once and I'm gonna show you guys how you basically score points to start off with before I start showing you guys uh, the flow of the game and what, what you can do on your turn and stuff like that. So what I mean by ecosystems is we have four different ecosystems, we have this this one here that looks sort of like a desert. Um, uh, this one would be considered a wetlands ecosystem, hence this icon here. Uh, this is a forest. Uh, this green one's a forest icon. So it's, you know, a forest ecosystem. And then this blue one is a tundra ecosystem, hence the blue icon. So they're all different ecosystems, but some of these animals can be in more than one ecosystem, hence the rain-tailed cat is part of two ecosystems. But not only are you trying to get animals that are in the same ecosystem, for instance, we have this Mexican gray wolf, this bighorn sheep, this ring-tailed cat, and even this California condor are all in a desert ecosystem. But you also want to get them in a descending or ascending order. And you're gonna score for each row, okay? and you're gonna score for each column. And it is possible, very possible, to score zero points in some of your rows and some of your columns because it's literally impossible to do so. So if I was to score, for instance, this particular column, this one here, this one, and this one are the only three that I could score. Even though this is the same ecosystem, hence a desert ecosystem, as the other three, You'll notice this is a four, while this is a three, and then this is a four. That has to go either in one direction or the other. It has to either go from the highest number to the lowest possible number in that column or row, or it has to go from the lowest number to the highest number either in that row or column. That's basically how it's going to work. Now, there is a total of five altogether, so one to five. So you're not going to get all five cards in a row or a column, because there's only four in each row and column. So you're gonna have to pick and choose which of the numbers are gonna get, are gonna not make it into your row or column. Is it gonna be the five or is it gonna be the one? And then of course, you may not always get even those in every row and column. Now, let's say for the point of argument, these two cards weren't here, or they were a different ecosystem or different numbers and I wanted to score for these two cards only. I could, because once again, these two cards are the same ecosystem and there are they are either ascending or descending this column, okay? So that would work. One card on its own, however, does not score you anything. So if you, let's see here, like row one, for instance, Row one scores me no points because this is a three, a desert, and a forest. This is a wetlands, but it's also a three, so these two can't go together. This is a five, but then this is a three. See, it has to be it has to be exact numbers. So the four would have to literally be in between this three and five for you to score anything. And they would have to be in the same ecosystem as well, which they are not because this is a desert and this is a forest. Even though this is a desert and a forest, this is definitely not the number it needs to be. This would have to be a desert and a forest, or one of them, and it would have to be a four, but it's not. So those three together don't score, and then these are both fives as well. So once again, nothing in this row scores any points at all because the numbers aren't exact, and obviously the ecosystems aren't 100% exact either. And you're not allowed to score for just one card in a row or a column. So that is something to note. Um, 
So yes, you could do that. You, if you had two cards in a row or a column that were exactly like this, for instance, with a particular ecosystem and a particular ecosystem, then you could score for two cards if that was the case. So let's just kind of show you how you would score and how many points you would score in a row and a column, first of all. So let's start with columns. So column one here is a desert. This one is a desert. This one is a desert. And this one is a desert as well. But this one does not go with these three because this is an ascending order from one, two, and three. This one does not work with those. There's no zeros in this game. So I can only score for these three cards for this column. Each card in the column that makes up your ecosystem will score you one point. So this mule deer is one point, this black-footed ferret would be one point, and this black-tailed prairie dog would be one point as well. Then you'll also get an additional point for each one of these tokens, these little schedule tokens on here as well. I'll tell you how you can get those later, but and there's various ways you can get these, but you'll get an additional point for that as well. So since there's one on that ferret, that gets me an additional point for that ferret. So it would normally score me four points, but you'll also notice there's this icon here, this keystone icon on the prairie dog. This keystone icon actually allows me to score the same column, or if it was in, a, in or if you were scoring for the row, again. So basically, not only am I getting four points for this column, I'm actually getting, I'm actually getting eight points for that column. And we have this handy little score sheet that'll make it easier, so that way you can do one column at a time and then one row at a time. Okay, so then the next one here. So this one is a wetlands, and it's a three, and then this one is a wild card. You'll notice it doesn't have an animal on it. It uh, also has this symbol here. It's obtained in a certain way, and I'll tell you guys later how to obtain it. But it's obtained in a certain way, and it's considered a wild card. And it can be utilized as any number you need it to be, okay? And it can be a different number for a different... So it can be, like, for instance, it can be a 4, which is what I need it to be for this column. But it can also be a 3 for this row here. Okay, so it can be two different numbers. It can be the number I need it to be in order to score points. So we have a three in a wetlands. We have a four in a wetlands. And we have this American Crocodile, five in a wetlands, okay? So that I can score for these three cards. I cannot score for this desert grassland because even though it's a wild, it's a completely different uh, ecosystem, okay? So I can't score for this column on this card. So that would be, and remember, these give you an additional point. So this was two points, this is two points, and this is two points to make it six points. But then if you look closely, it has that uh, keystone icon, just like the prairie dog did. The crocodile also has it. So I get to score this column again for a total of 12 victory points. So there's 12 there. Okay, column three. Column three is, so let's just do it really quick. So I can't score for this card here because it's a different number. And we will, there we go, do that so you can see the numbers. So this is a different number from these three. So I can't use this one for the column and scoring. So this is two, three, and four points. And because I have a keystone icon right here, that will score eight points for column three. Okay. The last column here has the, the red wolf. It has this wetlands river, which is, is a four, because that's what I need it to be. It has this white-tailed deer, which also is something I need it to be, which is good, because um, uh, this, this is helpful because it's a four. So three, and then we have this two here. So I get to score for all four of these cards for this particular column. So two points, four points, five points, and six points. Now, you'll notice there is uh, two of these icons. There's one on this beaver, and there's one on this red wolf. So I get to do it twice. I get to score again two more times. So that means not only do I get two, four, five, and six, I get six more points, and then I get six more points after that. 
So I actually didn't see that. So I actually get 18 points for column four. I scored 18 points instead of 12 points. Isn't that awesome? Sweet. That is definitely awesome. And my total score is a little bit higher than I thought it was. So now it's like 72. There we go. Fix that. Okay. So yeah, 18 points there. Got scored even more than I thought. Okay. So that's it for the columns. We've scored for all of the columns. Now we do the rows. Obviously, I can't score for anything for row one because these are all different numbers and different ecosystems. Uh, row two, once again, different numbers and different ecosystems because this is a different ecosystem from this and this, even though I can easily change the number to something I would need. This is still a different ecosystem. And this is a different ecosystem from this. So I can't I can't match this with this, and I can't match this with this or this. So I get nothing for that row. Row three, once again, I can't score for anything in row three because this is a different number from this one. It's a way different number. It's a one to a five, and it's two different ecosystems. These are the same ecosystems, but once again, this is a three, and this is a three. So I can't pair them up either. So I score zero points for row three. However, row five, I can score some points for row five because the cottontail rabbit here is worth two points. The desert is technically, I mean, not two points. It's a two. The desert grassland is a wild, so I'm going to make it a three for this row. The California condor is a four, and these are all desert ecosystem animals and ecos. This is, a, this all works for a desert ecosystem. And obviously, this is not a desert ecosystem, and it doesn't work with the number. It doesn't match well with the numbers. It doesn't, uh, it's not in an ascending order or descending order with these three cards. So I get one, two, three, and four and five points for that last row, which is what I have here. And then we have secret objective cards. Every person is going to start with a secret objective card, and for each one of these objectives that they can meet, they're going to score points. If they can meet just one of these, these uh, objectives, they're going to score five points. If they can meet two of these objectives, they're going to score 10 points. If they can meet three of these objectives, they can make 16 points. And if they can meet all four of these objectives, they get 24 points. Now, let's see what we have here. So I need to have uh, these three symbols here, which is uh, basically spring, okay? This These icons indicate spring. So they're on this side of the card here. And I need to have this exact configuration as well. So do I have that exact configuration? I do. This uh, black-footed ferret meets that. So does the black-tailed prairie dog. And so does this American crocodile. It meets that need. So therefore, I would score points for that. Do I get this one? Well, I need this exclamation point in this exact diagonal diagonal order. Do I have that as well? I do. The black-footed ferret has that icon that I need, and so does that American crocodile. It also has that icon that I need as well, and I have it exactly just like so. So I would score for this as well. This is basically an autumn type symbol, an autumn icon, and I need to have them three in a row as well. Do I have that here? Yes, I do. I have it here on the wetlands. I have it here on the bighorn sheep, and I have it here on this wetlands and river as well. So I would complete this objective as well. Do I complete this objective? Do I have any of these icons on any of my cards? I just need to have four in order to complete this. Do I have any? No, no. And they would be on this side of the card, underneath the keystone, basically, or the exclamation point. It wouldn't be underneath that. It would be right here where my pen is pointing on this side of the card. So no, 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 and no. I have zero zilch. I have none of them at all. So I can't score for any of that. And so then I would score 16 points because I completed three of these secret objectives, but not four. Hence, I get 16 points. Now, another thing you'll have in this game is you will have some synergy tokens, and we'll talk about how you can obviously uh, 
obtain these and utilize these. But at the end of the game, for every three of these synergy tokens you have left, it's worth an additional point. And at the end of the game, I had tons of them, and I was able to score five points with those synergy tokens because I had, well, three, six, nine, <laughs> 12, and 15. I actually had 16 altogether, so that would score me five points. So, wow, lots of points for that. So, um, and that's everything you need to know in, in, in order to score points and how you score points. Now, let's talk about, next, let's talk about the flow of the game and how you take actions on your turn. All right, so here we go. So, we've already talked about, obviously, how to uh, score points in the game. So, now that I've gotten all the cards off of my player board, I can show you guys how to actually play the game, how you take your turn. Okay, so you have two actions you can do on your turn. One action you can take is simply uh, picking one of these cards from the field here and placing them on your player board. Okay, that's one action you can take. Now, the first card is always free. But if you want, for instance, let's say I wanted this Desert Tortoise here, I would have to put a Synergy token onto each of these first cards in order to take the Desert Tortoise. Now, maybe I just happen to like Desert Tortoises more, but you'll notice this Desert Tortoise has that Keystone icon on it, so that's awesome. You'll notice it has an exclamation point as well, which could be useful as well. It's obviously a desert animal, and if you'll look closely, this is a desert animal, and this one over here is a desert animal as well, so I could potentially get some desert, a, a desert ecosystem started potentially early in the game. So going for the desert tortoise is, is a pretty good idea just because of how luckily it was set up. But then we do have uh, two animals in the tundra as well, so my opponent, he could be going for the ring seal and the polar bear perhaps or something like that for instance but yes you'll you'll just basically pick a spot that's empty that's on your player board and you'll place it there okay that's how you do it that's everything you do for that action uh, you will replenish cards so at the end of your turn you will replenish the cards and draw a new card if need be okay so that's one of the actions that you can take on your turn Another action you could potentially take on your turn, and I'm actually going to put this desert tortoise here. Another action you can take is uh, you can take you can do one of these skill token actions. There are more than five of these in the game, and you randomly choose five to play with in a multiplayer game. But if you're playing a solo variant, it could be different. The very first solo variant because it's sort of a campaign game for the solo game, the very first one, you only play with three particular skill tokens, and it even tells you, and I have it just so for that set up. But yes, uh, you can take one of these actions. Now, what do these do? Well, we've got a variety of different things here. If you decide to take this action, you can put one of those uh, schedule tokens onto a card that has this winter icon on it. What has a winter icon on it? Well, if you have the polar bear, for instance, on your player board, that has the icon you need for that particular uh, action. So you could put a schedule token on this polar bear to make it worth extra points. So that's something you could do, potentially. And then another thing you must do after you take the action is you have to discard two cards in the field. Okay, maybe there you can if you're playing a multiplayer game, you could potentially screw up your opponents because maybe there was an animal they were wanting. You could potentially discard the animal that they were wanting and mess them up. If you're playing a solo mode, it's really only the animals you don't think you're ever going to choose that you're most likely will discard. Right. And if you discard a card that has a synergy token on it, then the synergy token also gets discarded as well. So you've basically wasted a synergy token. If you ever take a card that has a synergy token, then you get the synergy token with it as well. So I'll make note of that now. But yes, that's another thing you'd have to do. You'd have to discard two cards, and then you would slide everything down and draw two more cards from the deck. Okay? That's one of the actions potentially you could take. All right? 
Then another one is basically the same thing as the last one. You can put schedule tokens on animals that have that exclamation point, like this desert tortoise, for instance, has it. Um, the polar bear does, the ring seal does, and that Mexican spotted owl also has it. And you can do it twice. So if you had two of those animals that had that symbol, you could do it twice. But then you'd have to discard two cards from the field again as well. Uh, this one just gives you eight synergy tokens, but then you have to discard three cards from the field, okay? Uh, this one actually lets you move animals on your player board. So if you have an empty spot on your player board, you can move animals around on your player board. And with this one, you can do it twice. So maybe when you placed this desert tortoise earlier and you have other animals here on the player board, maybe potentially, you know, it didn't work out for you. You could obviously move some animals around, making things a little bit easier to score points because it's hard to assume what numbers you're going to get. I might have assumed I might have gotten a one and instead found a five and might want to might want to move some of these down so I can make room for a five or something like that. Uh, so that's something you can do, but then you have to discard a card as well. Uh, this one is basically going to be for um, uh, the uh, these cards. So you can put uh, a schedule token on cards that have this weather icon, or spring, I should say. So that is another way of getting schedules, and you'd have to discard two cards as well. So basically, that's various skill. And there's others. There's... There's skill actions that let you draw cards from here and you can look at them and then pick one to keep and then discard the rest. There's another skill action token that will let you take cards from the discard pile. You can look at cards, three cards from the discard pile and then take one to put onto your player board. So that's another thing you could potentially do as well um, if you had that particular skill action. But then after you take a skill action, so let's say this one when you take a skill action, okay, you're going to flip it over to this side here, okay, the exhausted side. And then you might have some exhausted, um, for instance, you might have some exhausted tokens. And another thing you can do is even if they're not all exhausted, so like this one might not be exhausted and this one might not be exhausted. But if you have some action tokens here, that are exhausted. You can choose to activate all of them instead of activating one of these on the white side instead. So, but you, then you would have to act, you'd, you'd, for instance, have to move a card on your player board to an empty spot. You'd get two synergy tokens. You get a, a synergy token to an exclamation point animal, for instance, with this one. So th that's, that's what you would do. You'd get all three of those abilities if you decide to take that particular action. But then when you do that, then you get to flip them all back over onto the white side again. And every time you do that, this little token here goes down a number. If it ever goes down to zero, then it's game over. That's one way you can end this game is by taking these actions quite a bit. And obviously taking these actions quite a bit, that side. So that's another thing you could potentially do. Another way you're end, you'll end the game is when a player is able to fill up every single card in their grid. If they fill up every single card in their grid, all of them, then that will also end the game as well. So that's basically how those would work. Now, let's just talk about one more thing about placing animals down as action in this game. So, we have this desert tortoise here. So for my example, let's say I wanted to take this prawn horn antelope, and we'll ignore the synergy token that's sitting on it at the moment, okay? And let's say I put it right here next to the desert tortoise. When you place an animal, or a tree, or whatever it may be, even if it's one of these uh, cards here, uh, which we'll get to in a moment, then if, it ma if this icon matches this icon here, you'll get a synergy token. So if there's multiple icons and there's multiple cards surrounding it, for every single adjacent card that you that is surrounding the card you just put down, if it matches one of the icons, you're going to get several, several, or should I say, several potentially, um, potentially several 
of these synergy tokens potentially. So that's another thing you can do um, when doing it that way. You could potentially get some. So that's, you know, for instance, if I put that down, that would get me a synergy token as well. Um, if I put this guy down here next to the, uh, the owl, not only would I get one because it's a desert and this is a desert, but this is a forest and this is a forest. So just putting that one down got me two synergy tokens, for instance. So you'll get synergy tokens. That's one of the main ways you're going to acquire skin, uh, synergy tokens through the, throughout the game. Besides just simply taking like this action here that gives you eight, potentially. You could potentially get more just by filling your in your player board as well. That's one of the main ways you're going to get synergy tokens. Now, one of the main ways, one of the most useful things these synergy tokens are good for, besides getting certain cards you might want the most by paying synergy tokens to these cards. And of course, the player who takes a card that has a synergy token on it or more, they get all of those synergy tokens for their personal supply. Um, but once you have 10, you can, once per turn, if you have 10 synergy tokens, once per turn, you can pay 10 synergy tokens to acquire one of these four cards here. Remember, these act as wild cards for scoring purposes, but they also provide a particular icon you might need. They each There's one for each of the four different icons. Arctic, and forest, and wetland, and desert. Okay, and then they also have each of the seasons as well. So for scoring purposes with those particular cards, they could be very helpful in completing uh, some of these for your secret objectives as well. But yeah, that's what you're going to do if you can get uh, 10 of them. You can do it once per turn on your turn, but you have to have 10 to do it. And it's only once. So if you had 20, you'd have to wait another turn to do it again. But yeah, that's basically what those are good for the most, besides just simply paying for cards. You're going to want to try to get some of these if you can to help you um, complete rows and columns because it's really hard to get the numbers that you need from the field. And since these are a wild, these will come in handy big time. There's two of each of these per game in a multiplayer game. And like I said, rules could vary and setup could vary if you're playing solo mode because it's sort of like a campaign game. So but basically, that's everything you need to know in order to play Keystone North America. So if you guys liked my how to play video, don't forget to leave me a like and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.